Hello everybody, welcome to the National Shrine of Blessed Francis Silos and the Welcome Center. I'm Father Rich, I'm the director here, and I'm going to uh, show you around a little bit. Our ministry is, is basically a hospitality ministry where we receive the pilgrims who come here in fairly good number and have their own personal needs. Sometimes they need healing, sometimes they need confession, Sometimes they need just to talk. Sometimes they need just prayer and quiet. And that's what we're about, offering this kind of hospitality to any who come and welcoming them and uh, making sure their needs are satisfied. So you've entered what we call the Welcome Center. This is the first place the pilgrims come. They enter here and get an introduction to Blessed Silos if they haven't been here before. and. Uh, try to get into the uh, spirit of the place, which is, a, as I said, a place of prayer and quiet. First place we're going to go into now is what we call the Walk of Life, which is basically a little museum we have set up from the time when Father Silos was here. The first half of Blessed Silos's life was lived in Bavaria. He grew up in a little town called Giesen, in uh, southern Bavaria. It was a wonderful little town. It's almost the fairy book type of town with the castle of King Ludwig up on the hill and the old abbey of St. Mang's up on the hill and the church of St. Mang's. He was brought to the church the very day he was born to be baptized. He grew up there, went to early school there and uh, the entire town was pretty much Catholic so his roots were in the deep Catholicism of uh, Europe at that time. Blessed Silos went to grade school in the town of Fusen, went to high school in the little larger town of Augsburg, and then to the University of Munich in Munich. Sometime along the way he thought about being a priest, but really didn't decide until after two years at the university when he decided he was going to not only be a priest and ordained a priest but he was going to become a missionary priest and uh, joined the Redemptorist who were at that time ministering particularly to the German speaking immigrants in the United States. The immigrants poured into the country at that time mostly at that time were German and Irish and the ability to speak German was very much needed. People just had to practice their faith and faith saves religion, that's what they found and they ministered to the German speaking people throughout the eastern United States at that time. So when Francis Xavier Silos arrived here in the United States he went to the Redemptorist in Baltimore at St. James Parish, entered the novitiate for a year, and took his vows at the end of that time. He still had another year of theological studies, which he did there also, was ordained in Baltimore, and uh, for a couple months served as a parish priest in Baltimore. He would then move on to Pittsburgh, to St. Philomena. In Pittsburgh, he was with another saint, St. John Newman, or some people say Neumann. St. John Newman was the pastor of St. Philomena's, and uh, the two of them shared a room with only a curtain between the two beds to provide him for some privacy. Went on after Pittsburgh to Baltimore, and uh, then from Baltimore, to Cumberland, Maryland, and then to Annapolis, Maryland. He served while he was in Pittsburgh for a bit of time as the novice master for future Redemptors. He had only been in vows several years, but they still knew he was such a spectacular person that St. John Newman, who was then the superior of the Redemptors in America, appointed him the novice master. Later he would become what is called the Prefect of Students, which would be for those who were already professed with vows but studying for priesthood, 
and he served them in Cumberland, Maryland, and in Annapolis. Now, during this time, the Civil War was raging, and everyone was subject, including still himself, to the draft. You could pay $300 to be excused, but they didn't have that kind of money, especially with all the students they had. So one day, he went down to Washington, D.C., knocked on the door of the White House, went in and chatted with Good Father, good father Silas and Good Father Abraham. Now, Abraham Lincoln couldn't guarantee that they would not be drafted, but none of them were. He also went to see the Secretary of War at the time. He made a comment that he was such a rude character that if they ever made a feast day for grumpy men, this man would not only get the feast day, but an octave. He was not pleased with the Secretary of War. But he went back to the students and continued to minister. After being in Annapolis, Maryland, he was appointed to be a home missionary. That is, he went from parish to parish and preached for a week or two in the parish and converted many souls. During the time we hear stories about him being asked to pray for special cases, and there are some reported healings. But he didn't like to make a big deal of that because he was worried the people would think that the healing came from his hands. And he knew very well it came from Almighty God. So he never emphasized that, but he did pray for the people. He spent hours in the confessional. He had many people writing to him and coming to talk to him as their spiritual director. He was known as a very wonderful, cheerful, and holy person. He uh, performed his ministries very well. For a short time, he went to St. Mary's Parish in Detroit, and then his final assignment was down here to New Orleans. At that time, New Orleans was not considered a plum parish. New Orleans was known to be filled with disease and fevers, and uh, many would just as soon not be assigned there, but he said he would want it to be there, and he went down to New Orleans. He uh, ministered so well that people continued to follow him very closely, even after his death. In the time that Father Silas ministered in New Orleans, there was a pastor of the entire complex. They had three churches, large churches. St. Alphonsus was for the English-speaking, many Irish immigrants. Notre Dame de Bon Secours on Jackson Avenue was for the French-speaking, and St. Mary's was for the German-speaking. Now, there was one pastor, Father Duffy, but each church had appointed what was called a prefect, who really acted as the pastor of the local parish, Blessed Francis Xavier Silos was appointed prefect of St. Mary's, to which the Silos Center is attached. He ministered to people constantly, and at that time, the real plague that was going on was the yellow fever. They thought at that time that yellow fever was spread from one person to another. In reality, it was spread by a mosquito. But Silas went to the homes of the dying, as we have in this little illustration here, prayed for them, forgave them their sins, and prepared them for heaven. He himself was struck with yellow fever. And amid the prayers of the local community of Redemptorists, died after a struggle with the disease. This is a little diagram of Silas' events and world events. You can see that Silos lived in the 1810s to 1860s. He was born in 1819 and uh, he died in 1867. So he was a young man. He asked to and was buried under the statue of our Mother of Sorrows in St. Mary's Church. He was buried there because he had a special devotion to Mary and he had been the one to bless the statue. 
Later, his grave was moved several times because of hurricanes, floods, and other things like that. But he's now buried in St. Mary's once again in the shrine that we have. During his lifetime, he touched many people. But the strange thing is that after his lifetime, people continued to come and ask him to pray for them, to intercede for them on their behalf. And uh, it is because of this great devotion of the people that this day we are in high hopes that he soon will be canonized a saint. Every day people report special healings, sometimes physical, sometimes spiritual, sometimes just the return of peace. And people are not slow to pray that Blessed Silas will join them in their quest for whatever their needs are, and we are here to help them. So one of the things we offer in the Welcome Center is this uh, lovely gift shop because people are looking for things to take home and inspire their prayers and their continued prayers to Francis Silos. Of course, many of the things are of Blessed Francis, but there's many other Catholic uh, inspirational things. They pick up their things, I bless them, and they bring them home and continue their prayers at home. It's very important that people not only come for the day, but they continue to bless us. We have with us two people. Dawn, who's a person in charge of the gift shop here, and Colleen, who is one of our volunteers. We really rely on volunteers. They are God sent. They take care of us and help us to man the various projects that go on, in this case, the gift shop. We always have a volunteer in the shrine itself who is willing to pray with the pilgrims if they so desire. We have people fulfilling orders that come over the web or over the phone and send them articles of things that they order so that they can receive these sacramentals into their life. So this is Dawn and Colleen. I'm Dawn and Colleen is one of our volunteers and she's extremely helpful. Um, she puts in more than one day a week and helps us out a lot of times because we're always looking for more volunteers. In the gift shop, we have a whole section that is all custom items of Father Silos. And then we also utilize a lot of local artists that have done paintings of the churches. And we also have um, holy water bottles. And all these things are done by um, local artists, which we try to use our local artists and all the talent that's here in New Orleans. Colleen? It's a blessing being here, and I would recommend it to anyone. If you haven't come, you really need to come by. It's a beautiful place, and it's a wonderful pilgrimage. And be sure to come to the gift shop. The last thing I want to show you in the Welcome Center here on the first floor is this uh, little theater that we have to introduce our pilgrims to the life of Blessed Silos. We have an eight-minute video that kind of introduces them. Having then been through the Walk of Life, the museum, and seeing the video, the uh, people will be ready then to go to the shrine to offer their prayers. This area is uh, the nerve center, you might say, of our work, our ministry here at uh, Silos Center, because this is where so many of the details take place. A lot of orders come in over the phone or via the website or emails, and they pack up the orders and send it to them. They talk on the phone to people who call, and there's a lot of phone calls that come in just for people to be able to say what's going on in their lives, to request prayers, a candle in the, in the shrine, etc. And uh, our people upstairs take care of it, both our staff and our volunteers. So with us today, just so you see them, we have two of our people, Heidi and Marilyn. And uh, they can say a word to you of welcome too. 
we would love um, love to help you if you have any needs and would like to call or if you'd like to come in we'd love to see you don't be shy we are here for you that is our most important reason for being here is to talk to you to help you to with whatever you need that we're here to serve more than the business part of it so please do call us do come see us we'd love to see you so we are now entering the shrine of Blessed Francis Xavier, where his uh, relics are kept and people pray. This is part of the uh, shrine, the exterior. You can see the original casket with he, which he was buried in, some of the things from his life, a piece of his hair, his rosary from his habit, things like that that are part of historical background that are important in the life of Blessed Francis Silos. This is a place where people come, light their candles, say their prayers, and we'll now go into the actual reliquary of Blessed Silos. We're now in the most sacred part of the shrine of Blessed Francis Xavier, where his relics are available for veneration and asking his intercession that he prays with the individuals who come here for their special needs. We hear, as I have said, story after story of marvelous events taking place through the intercession of Blessed Silas. Silas is a wonderful man also because he was uh, happy. He liked a good joke. He liked a good laugh. He enjoyed teasing. He uh, is called in one of the very first biographies, the name of the biography is The Cheerful Ascetic, since that's what he was. Cheerful, but still very ascetical, very much focused that the end of life is the most important thing and eternal life is the gift of God. He said to the people and the lines at his confessionals were long because of his way, I will always receive you with all gentleness. And people knew him as the cheerful ascetic, but the gentle and loving confessor, confessor and parish priest. So in days gone by, the priest, when they died, were buried in the sanctuary of the church. Originally, Blessed Silos was buried over there in the altar of Mary. But then he was first exhumed, dug up, when he had uh, the uh, pronouncement of heroic virtue, servant of God, venerable. And part of that process is checking the remains of the person involved. It says here, it says, here in peace rest servant of God, which was the first title, Francis Xavier Silos, born January 11th, 1919, professed a redemptorist, May 16th, 1844, ordained a priest, December 22nd, 1844, died here in New Orleans, October 4th, 1867, the cause for beatification began in 1900, and he was beatified by St. Pope John Paul II, April 9th, 2000. So we still uh, welcome people to the shrine, but we're still also working to see this wonderful man declared a saint by the Roman Catholic Church. We need one more miracle, a miracle that is proven in Rome and declared a miracle, and it has to be beyond a doubt that it is extraordinary and cannot be explained in any way except that it was miraculous. So we have some cases in Rome we also have a man who works full time on what we call the cause of canonization. His name is Father Gil Enderly, a redemptorist, 
who is here to seek the canonization of blessed Francis Xavier Silos. He uh, holds the title of Vice Postulator. His job is to review marvelous events and see if they are worthy of submitting to Rome for review in the cause of canonization. It is blessed that we are in the same church where Father Silos ministered and that the people of God have loved him since his first arrival in New Orleans, during his life here, and for all these years since he died as a revered and holy man. He is a blessing for us, and we hope that many will come and understand the peace and the prayer that is possible in the shrine and the welcome center of blessed Francis Xavier Silos. I wanted to end this tour here at this bench we have in the shrine because I think it expresses who Blessed Francis Silos was and still is for us. You can see he smiles. He's a saint that smiles. He is present to us and enjoys being with us. We hope that many of you will come and pray and be at peace in the shrine of blessed Francis Xavier Silos. May God bless you.